Oh, uh, another question I have. I've been um, asking the IT people either to install or to send you information on installing the uh, IDE, uh, the development environment for the processing language, which we'll take up in the second half of the course. And um, I just wanted to make sure that people have gotten that email. Uh, and uh, processing is a computer language that's, that's oriented toward doing multimedia. And um, it's, a, it's a lot easier to use, uh, certainly to begin learning at least than, uh, than just about any other computer language I've ever seen. And uh, I've worked with it not only with uh, high school students, but even with middle school students doing graphics and things like that. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time doing that uh, because it gives you a chance to uh, to learn uh, some sort of traditional uh, computer programming techniques and at the same time do some things that you might find uh, interesting. But we'll get into that in a few weeks. I just wanted to make sure that people had it downloaded and ready to go for when I start doing it. So we don't run into a, a whole bunch of problems uh, at that time. Um, something else um, I thought I'd mention is that there are a few students uh, who uh, have indicated that they wanted to sign up for the course, but I um, I haven't actually seen them uh, all semester, and and uh, I, I don't know why. And so I wanted to uh, find out if anybody knows of anyone who is trying to be in the course and uh, isn't accessing the course material for some reason. You know, when I send out emails, I I have a huge list. It's uh, I know maybe 28 or 29 people that I'm sending emails to, but I'm not getting homeworks from that many people. So uh, that means um, that means somebody um, has has dropped off the grid. OK, now. Let's talk a little bit about this COVID stuff and. Um, you know, one thing that has sort of become clear to me is this uh, this virus is really bringing to light um, a lot of things that that don't work in the world today. Um, and uh, it's shall I say, I find it a bit uh, disturbing um, and that uh, I would have expected there to be sort of more global cooperation, but uh, that isn't happening. And uh, it's not helped by the fact that uh, the president of the United States is, an, is a clown or as my number two son calls him an orange clown. What's uh, what's interesting is that uh, right now as we approach uh, the election here in the United States is that how no matter how much negative information and bad information uh, comes out about President Trump. He's got a core group of supporters, maybe about 42% of the population, who 
uh, support him no matter what. And I guess I should have uh, expected that. But uh, I'm disappointed that uh, more of our people uh, aren't more thoughtful. Uh, and it really drives home to me the importance of education. I, and because um, in the United States, in any case, uh, the people who don't support President Trump tend to be college educated. In fact, the odds are that if a person is college educated, that they overwhelmingly don't support him. And uh, the people who do support him tend to be the the less educated people. And uh, often, not only are they less educated, but they're less well off. And that's exactly the group of people that are hurt by uh, his political policies. And they don't seem to be uh, uh, connecting that information, which is something I, I find disappointing. Um, and um, when I was young, I used to uh, ask myself the question, because when I was young, it wasn't that long after World War II. And I would ask my, and I would always wonder for myself as we studied these things, how a modern civilized country like Germany could have could have put a person like Adolf Hitler into power. I would wonder that when I was a, a, a young a kid, a high school, let's say, and uh, I have to say that. I no longer wonder that because uh, the uh, the playbook that uh, Trump is using seems to align very closely with uh, the playbook that Hitler used. So I, you know, I, I guess I shouldn't use the class to talk politics, and I and I'm glad it's not your politics. I wouldn't talk about your politics talking about my politics, uh, because uh, I'm really distressed by what's happening. And of course, it affects everything to do, the fact that I'm distressed by what's happening. So enough of that. So let me uh, here, I, I have the, uh, the syllabus for the course here. And let me go down here into the homework section, right in here. And I have a link to a website on Europe. Pull up the COVID data. I'll open link here. OK. And uh, if you haven't downloaded it, here's where it is. And here's a download. Download today's data on geographic distribution of COVID-19 cases worldwide as of 29 September 2020. So you can you download it here. There it's downloading for me. Let me grab the file. As an Excel file goes, it's it's pretty big. And uh, nope, sorry, I'm trying to download this file here. I'm in my downloads folder. There we go. Sorry, sir. Could you please <laughs> share the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I apologize. Let me. <clears throat> OK. Screen shared. <clears throat> OK, here's the link to the to the file. Uh, let me just click on it again. OK, here's the web page, European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. And um, here's the link for downloading the Excel spreadsheet with all the data on it, which I've just clicked on and I've just downloaded. And here's the file. And uh, every day it puts in new countries for 
uh, new data for each country uh, in here. And um, you can look across here and see what these columns are. There's I was spreading it out here a little bit. Here's the date. Notice that it has the most recent date on the top, going backward in time as you go down. There's a yeah. Hello. Okay, any question? Okay, I guess we're okay. So, most recent date on top, and then it uh, will have the day, month, year, um, the number of cases that were recorded for that day, and it has the, the deaths recorded for that day, uh, the country, um, and uh, here's the population of the country right here. And then here it says cumulative, cumulative number for 14 days of COVID-19 cases per 100,000 population. So if I'm to believe what they are saying, and I haven't checked it, that what they're doing is they're adding up the, the numbers for the last 14 days and then dividing um, by the population to find the number of deaths, um, not in deaths, number of cases per 100,000. So <clears throat> uh, this is what in statistics or in, in mathematics, this is a type of running average. And all it does is smooth out the numbers because, as you know, the numbers will jump around from day to day. Like, you look right on top here, Afghanistan, there are 12 cases, uh, 929, zero cases, 928, 35 cases, 927. These numbers jump around. So if you add a bunch of them and, uh, and then do that, what happens is these numbers tend to smooth out. So that way, when you plot the data, you're not getting numbers that jump around all over the place. You're getting a smooth looking curve. So um, now you could take this data and kind of work backwards. For example, you could do something like, here's what I would first do if I'm reading these headings properly. I would take um, this, uh, and it's per 100,000 population. So um, multiply by 100,000, divide by, then divide by 14 to give me something like an average number of cases per day. And you could do something like that. But uh, what, I, what I'm going to do right now, just for, uh, just to show you some things that you might think about. I'm just going to use these numbers and plot these numbers. So the, consider this sort of a, a smoothed out uh, data for the number of cases uh, for each country as we go down here. So you can see if the data is going down, going up, or whatever along here. Um, and I'll be perfectly honest, uh, a lot of this data I just simply don't don't trust. I assume that every country uh, is uh, accumulates their data differently. Uh, some countries are only counting cases of people that show up in the hospital. They don't have a way of counting cases where people don't show up at the hospital. Um, they're, uh, if somebody catches the virus, catches COVID, and they end up um, um, dying of a heart attack, because of the COVID, the country might not say they died from COVID. They might say they died from a heart attack. So the deaths are perhaps 
not not good numbers. And uh, every country is doing their own data, so every country is doing it differently. So all of this makes it hard to compare data from one country to another. And uh, when I look at some of the data, I just simply I don't believe the numbers. Um, and uh, for example, um, if I look at the data for um, a country that doesn't have an extensive a medical infrastructure, I assume that they have a lot of people getting getting sick and they have no way of knowing it. Um, and then you have something like what's happening in the United States. This is sort of what goes back to what I was saying in the beginning, you know, uh, where the, uh, the president is constantly trying to convince the uh, health agencies and the government uh, to report the data differently than what they're doing because he doesn't like the numbers because they make him look bad. So at the best, uh, you can look at the data for one country and look how it's going up and down, assuming that that one country is collecting their data consistently, which is not always a good assumption. But you look at the data for one country and plot the curves, and hopefully looking at the curves of different countries, you can get an idea how their infection rates are going. So, you know, this is a, a classic kind of data analysis problem. And um, so, uh, is, you know, how do you make it so that you're looking at, at apples and apples from one country to the next and not looking as the saying goes apples and oranges where the data represents something that's so entirely different from one country to the next that you can't really comparison do a comparison but having said all of that let me uh let me just do some examples here now suppose i have a friend of mine and he's a smart fellow and uh, he has different political views than I, but I still talk with him. <laughs> uh, that's I I like to think that's something we should we should all do because uh, while I might accuse other people of being narrow minded, sometimes I discover that I myself am narrow minded, and uh, and I learn that by having conversations with other people. So uh, and he was. Uh, he was telling telling me, well, gee, the United States, we should do more like what Sweden did because they certainly have the virus under control is what he was saying. And uh, now usually people who make statements like this uh, don't actually look at the data. They, they read it online somewhere and they take that as being the truth. And uh, I, I tell people, that um, I've never read a news story where I actually knew what the truth was, where the news story didn't make some kind of a mistake. <clears throat> sometimes they're minor mistakes, sometimes they're big mistakes. So you guys in comms and media, you know, you go into this field, um, <clears throat> um, just think about that. You know, as you go into the field and you do your your reporting uh, of data and uh, I have never seen a story where there hasn't been a mistake. <clears throat> so with this, let me say I want to check my friend's results for Sweden and I want to compare them with a couple of other countries to get some idea Is Sweden a country that we want to emulate or not. Now, let me sort of explain this, that um, uh, Sweden has taken the approach that they're going to deal with the virus by protecting at-risk people, let's say old people and people who might have particular medical conditions. So they'll tell those people that they should isolate and they should wear masks 
but they're going to let the rest of the country go about their business, not wear masks, and and uh, that way their 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 thinking is all the people that won't be seriously affected by the virus will catch the virus, and there will be what's called herd immunity. I hope you understand that concept. Of, if you don't, I'll mention it a little bit as we go along, or if you ask me, and therefore. Uh, they'll develop herd immunity in the population. They'll protect the people at risk so they won't have many deaths. And then the country will be immune from the virus. Therefore, they won't even need a vaccine. Whereas other countries are telling people, you need to wear a mask. You need not to go out in public. And, um, I, and, and uh, that's how we need to uh, save people's lives. So different approaches here. So, okay, so I want to look up Sweden's data. So here, let me, uh, right up in this corner, let me, first of all, uh, expand the view to 200%. So there we go. Now, here there's search sheet. You see that right there. So I want to find Sweden on the list. Look, all the countries are in alphabetical order. So Sweden's going to be pretty far down. So I'll do, I'll type in here, Sweden. There we go. So it brings me down to the first instance of Sweden. And uh, so it's right after Suriname. Okay, so Sweden, here's now, um, So this is the moving average, as I said, of cases in Sweden. I don't think so. It's over here. It's over here. This is the moving average of cases in Sweden per 100,000 population. This is the population of Sweden here. And if you look here, you know, and uh, you see that what Sweden has a population of just over 10 million people. Sweden's a pretty small country. Uh, I mean, where I live, the state of Florida is over 20 million people. So Sweden's about half the size of the state of Florida. So here's that average of deaths per 100,000 population over 14 days. So what I want to do, I just want to plot this data. So I'll click here, and now I want to go down to where it drops off to zero, which is where they about where they start collecting the data. So I go down here. And it looks like it's perhaps like right about here. So I'll click on this. So that's all my data that I'm going to take this. I'm going to graph this data. And uh, so where do I do graph? I go up to insert. I come over here to scatter plots. And I'll just here, I'll just plot the points. There. So here's the data. But remember, First thing I said is that they go from most recent date to the uh, uh, to the past. So this is the present date, and then this is where the data starts. So I want to flip this axis around because this is backwards the way I usually look at graphs. Usually, you know, the zero point is back in the past and I'm moving up toward the present. So this isn't the way I usually look at it. So I'll click on this, right click, I'll do format axis. And then I go over here and values in reverse order. So this now plots the data for Sweden where this is the past and this is the present time right here. And um, so I don't know whether this looks good or bad or or anything, actually, you know, I don't know. I haven't. Let's look at another country, see what the graph of the other countries look like. And uh, notice this number here is just just a hair above 40. OK, let's pick. Uh, let me pick. Germany. Oh, 
Okay, Germany. Here's Germany. So here's the data in Germany. Notice that Germany is a much larger country. Looks like 83 million here. I click on this and I go down to where the data drops off to about zero. Say right here. There we go. Now I'll graph the data for Germany. Insert. And now I got to flip the axis. OK, or click, right click, format axis, values in reverse order. So here's the data for Germany. It's a much larger country. Notice, by the way, that the number here is just above 30. Remember, in Sweden, it was just above 40. And, uh, and then we have this part of the curve looks different. So whatever Germany did appears to have been fairly different than what Germany did. So let me leave this here. And now let me go to the good old USA. So let me, here, let me come back up here. They put United States. OK, doesn't like that. Let me look. United States is going to be right down at the bottom. Let me just try US, USA there. OK, USA. Now, United States, 329 million people. OK, much bigger than both Sweden and Germany. In fact, Sweden is about the size of an average state in the United States. Uh, now, this number, though, is much larger, right? Now, let me come down here, click. A shift click here. Insert. Graph. And then I'll swap. There, come on there. Format axis, values in reverse order. OK, here's the United States. Well, this is this doesn't look good. And look at here where you know Germany and Sweden were down here. Here's the United States right up in here. And um, so uh, now I could you know copy and look at these charts again. Let me. Uh, Actually, let me try to do that to put the charts together here. Let me just label this USA. There. Now let me copy. Let me put it in a. A sheet here. There's USA. Now, let me go back up to Germany. Let me just go up like this here. You, you know, I just, I, I'm not searching. I'm just going up. You see how big this spreadsheet is as we're passing through all of these countries. I should see Sweden pretty soon. I think I passed it. There's Suriname, Sweden. So where's our graph from Sweden? It should just pop up. What happens, it takes a while for the spreadsheet to catch up, but it's not popping up here. There it is. Sweden. Now a copy. 
Let me go back to my text file here. Let me paste it in here. Paste, there's Sweden. We have USA, Sweden. Now notice here, and this can fool you, you might uh, want to go in and change these graphs a bit. Uh, to put the make these scale the same and we talked a little bit about doing that okay notice the top of this scale is 300 top of this scale is 150 and 150 is here so as you can see that the entire sweden graph is is under this line right so uh you if you want if you put these graphs on the if you put these plots on the same graph you want to make sure, you know, to adjust for these numbers here. But just looking here and here, notice that all the countries are experiencing a new rise in cases. And uh, uh, it's predicted in any case that we have a second surge coming in the fall. And some people fear that the second surge is going to just shoot way up, way above what the peak was at our previous uh, peak. And uh, part of the reason for doing that is that they say, well, as weather gets cold and people come indoors, that it makes it easier to get infected and that um, they go back to the 1918 flu, which is the last worldwide pandemic uh, that the second surge was the most deadly. By far, more people were infected and more people died in the second surge. So people are saying, if we track what happened in 1918, there's going to be another surge and it's going to be much higher. Plus, what happens is you also have the regular flu usually kicks in this time of year. Um, and... Um, so we're going to have a combination of COVID and flu. And the and the and one of the concerns is not only the number of people who get sick and die, but um, what happens is hospitals get overloaded. And this happened in some cases with our previous surge, hospitals would get overloaded and um, and that would cause problems. So let me go back now. This is Sweden. Now we have Germany. Here is the other data we plotted. So let me find Germany here. I'll put this back in Germany. Okay, here's Germany. And, uh, and I go down to where it was right in here somewhere. I'm waiting for that graph to pop up now for Germany. There it is. Here's Germany. Okay, Germany, now a copy. Let me go back here again. Um, I don't know if I can fit Germany in there or not. Let me try. There's Germany, okay. So here, for example, are graphs from three countries. Sweden, USA, and Germany. Now, notice that Germany, the peak here is 100. So all three of these graphs have different scales on here. So you may want to go in. Now, remember, we talked about how you can change the scales. You know, again, you right-click on here, and you look at, let's say, uh, I think it's formatting axis, if I remember right. But play around and Try if you are comparing data from different countries. I think it's useful to put everything on the same scale. So we look at this. I think it's pretty clear. Germany is by far doing better than anybody else. Now, um, so if the United States, which is 
by far doing worse of, let's say, any country that's close to the Atlantic Ocean, um, if the, if the, at least the North Atlantic. Uh, the United States is doing worse. And uh, then um, Sweden is doing second worst. Germany is doing the best. So if I wanted to look and see what another country was doing in order to handle the viral infection, I look at someplace like Germany and not look at Sweden. And now in the United States, to give you an idea how you know politics comes into play here, you know one of the uh, you know, one of the one of the problems with the way the United States is looking at this, and I think it goes back actually several decades to when in the United States they started to ban smoking indoors. In other words, if you were in a public area that was indoors, like a restaurant. In the beginning, they said restaurants had to have no smoking areas. So people who didn't smoke didn't have to inhale cigarette smoke because it's so unhealthy. So first, and they started telling restaurants they had to have no smoking areas. And then this evolved over the years to the point where in most states in the United States, most places, indoor smoking is completely banned. So, you know, they banned indoor smoking. Why? Because people who didn't smoke were adversely affected by cigarette smoke. Arg arguably, smoking cigarettes is the most dangerous thing that you individually can do to your body. Now, some of you, I'm, I'm sure they sm you smoke. And um, that, um, and uh, I also know because I've known people who smoked. I've never smoked. I never smoked because I, I, I had asthma even as a young child, and, and my parents made it clear to me that I would be a fool to start smoking uh, with asthma. And um, I actually had an uncle who had asthma and smoked, and he, and he died relatively young because of that, because of lung issues. Now, um, I know that smoking is, uh, nicotine is very addictive and, and I see people who, uh, who smoke and they just can't, they can't go more, they can't go a, more than a couple hours without smoking another cigarette. And it's, uh, and, and I know if you're addicted to something, it's, it's extremely difficult to stop using it. And uh, I just look at, uh, some of the people around UCA, around campus. So look at, at Masood, Professor Masood there. Um, man, he cannot stop smoking. And um, and he's, uh, I keep telling himself, uh, telling him that, you know, he needs to stop, he's killing himself. But I know it's so difficult to stop. Uh, but uh, so, Usually you start smoking, you don't realize that. And by the time you realize it, you're already addicted. And, uh, and then it's very, very difficult to stop. Okay, so now back, that's, I'll get off my, my, uh, my soapbox, as they say. I'll stop making my speech about smoking. I guess today is the day I make speeches, right? I made a speech about politics and made a speech about smoking. I'm sure there's something else I can make a speech about. Um, so and the problem in the United States is that uh, it goes, people in the United States, one of their flaws is that they don't want to do what the government or other authorities tell them they should do. Uh, they view that as it's a violation of their freedom. And, this, and then there was a lot of argument about that when there was smoking and the, the government passed laws banning smoking. So I think this whole thing goes back to that. So in the United States, what happens is the government will say, uh, now the 
the federal government, the government that Trump is in charge of, has never told people that they have to wear masks. And, the, and I think because it's Trump supporters tend to be these people who say, you can't tell me what to do, I'll do what I want to do. And uh, But some in some states and in some localities in the United States, they've said, they've told people, when you go out in the public, you have to wear a mask. And people say, you can't tell me what to do. The government can't tell me what to do. You're infringing on my, my freedom, telling me that I have to wear a mask, and I refuse to wear a mask. So people become stubborn about not wearing a mask because they won't do what the government tells them to do. So that's that's the tragedy of what's happening here in the United States. The people don't realize it's not so much the government telling them that they have to wear a mask, it's telling them that they can protect themselves and other people around them by wearing a mask. And, uh, you know, but they don't think that far ahead. It's like I said, they tend not to be very well educated. So here we have then, because of that, uh, that's been the biggest problem in the United States is people refusing to do what the government or the, the medical authorities tell them they should be doing. Now, Sweden took the approach that it's only people who are at serious risk that we're going to tell to wear a mask. We're going to let everybody else not wear a mask. So in the United States, they say, look, instead of telling us to wear a mask, you should do what Sweden did and and those and look how much better Sweden is. Well, Sweden is much better than the United States. I mean, uh, <laughs> right? Sweden's much better. You look at these numbers. Sweden's much better. The United States basically just keeps going up and up and up here. You, know, you draw a line here, your line will look like that. But the very, very best countries are the countries where they everyone pretty much wore a mask and they practice social distancing like Germany. And you can look at other countries like that. So um, you can so you can take data like this, and then you might want to go and look at, you know, do is this country mandating man? How is this country telling people they need to behave? And what difference does that make in uh, how the virus has inf has infected the people, the citizens of that country? Now, certainly the United States isn't the worst country. Um, and I would say that, uh, you know, right now, I think, uh, you know, I, I look at India and India is very bad. Um, Brazil's very bad. Plus, I my suspicion is that both Brazil and India are really underreporting their numbers. So they're probably much worse than they than they report. Uh, another country that I think is is probably much worse than they have reported, and then that's Russia. Uh, and um, because uh, um, the uh, because of you know how Putin runs the government, I'm sure he's not going to do anything that makes his country look bad. It's sort of Trump's attitude, unfortunately, because you can't solve a problem if you pretend that there's no problem. Okay, so this is an example, looking at data. So you might want to look at data and rather than try to compare, let's say, these numbers with this number, because like I said, you don't know how these numbers are reported, but you can work on the assumption that within a country, that the reporting is probably, hopefully, uniform. So this is why, uh, this is an example, you know, of how you might look at the data. Now, you know, uh, a couple of people told me that they're actually looking at additional data outside this chart. And there is additional data outside the chart. Uh, in the United States, there are some universities, such as Johns Hopkins, that are collecting data and um, and but I've on purpose I have not go, gone to a U.S. source of data 
Um, I, you know, I picked the European source because I think that's every bit as trustworthy and probably more so. Um, and um, so, but you can go to some other sources and try to look at the data from different sources and try to form an opinion and, and then, you know, and state your opinion and then say, this is the data that I am using in order to state this opinion. So it's how you might write a, uh, 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 a well-researched um, magazine article, for instance. And um, as I say, I think you really need to go back, try to look at the raw data, not trust what people are telling you in the, uh, in the press, and be suspicious uh, when, data, when people present you data and don't reference where the data came from. So, you know, go back to this. I'm assuming that there's, uh, that, uh, you know, and I, and I don't know for sure that this data is not corrupted in some way, but um, using this data, I'll tell you that I would be using this data you can make your own judgment then and whether you think this is reasonably good data or not. Now, this is a huge Excel file. If you look already, you know, it's over 16,000 rows. You go to the bottom here, all the way down, 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 down. And in Zimbabwe, we're almost 46,000 rows down on this. So this is a huge Excel spreadsheet. This is exactly what you want to use spreadsheets for uh, when you're manip when you're analyzing large scale data, and for people who are looking at careers potentially analyzing large sets of data, unless you're writing individual pieces of computer software to do things, Excel is a good piece of software to use. You you can do a lot with Excel. So. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to give you an example here. Let me save this. What should I call it? Save uh, COVID data. And today's date, September 29th. I'll save it there to my desktop. OK, so I just wanted to give you sort of a, a very simple example of how you might use this data. I'm looking at the data, um, looking at the data that's self-reported by these three countries, and I'm saying, well, I clearly don't want to do it the way the United States did it. I'm looking here, it looks to me like Germany did it, did it best. And uh, so then you might look to see, well, what did Germany do? And what did the United States do that was so bad? And um, so any questions about this? About where to find the chart, where to find the data? It's on this page that I've linked on the, on the syllabus. And uh, so you can download it already in Excel format and uh, just go to town on it. Like I said, I'm not looking for you to write a dissertation on this. I'm just trying to um, get you to the point where you can, you can use a massive data set and study it to try to form some opinions about something. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, now, that was so much for that. Let me come back and uh, share my camera here. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned that uh, try to install that processing um, IDE. For me, anyway, I think that's going to be the most interesting part of the course. Uh, because we'll be we'll be actually using processing 
to draw graphics and do things of that sort. And I have an example or, or two. Um, and we're not we're not going to get into it enough to to do all of these things, but I have an example of actually writing a simple video game in processing. <clears throat> and I also have an example of um, where one of my students actually did a multimedia presentation actually for a debate did a, 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 where you know, she uh, actually, when she got up, it was her turn to speak of the debate. She actually used processing to do her entire presentation for the debate. <clears throat> and, uh, and the debate was on the ethics of dropping the atom bomb in Japan at the end of World War II, which is continuing to be, you know, a, a hot topic, whether that was, you know, the, the moral thing to do, at least in the United States, it's, it's a continuing to be a hot topic. Um, and um, so, we're, in a few weeks, we're going to be starting processing. I want to make sure you download that and you have it installed on your computer. Um, one, I wanted to make a comment. I guess the last homework, when people started to do it, it was more challenging than they expected than the previous homeworks. So a lot of people actually turned things in uh, a day late. And uh, I mean, I, I let people do that, but uh, it, uh, it, I would hope perhaps that now that you've been surprised in this way once, that um, you might want to look at the homework problems a little bit further in advance. So uh, if they look like they might be more challenging, you can start on them a bit sooner and give yourself a bit more time. Um, yeah, this whole virus, like I said, it looks like in most countries is starting to come back as as the experts expected uh, and um, it's uh, by my assessment I think even if we have a vaccine available a, a good vaccine available soon that it's going to take many many months to generate enough doses of the vaccine to vaccinate uh, the majority of the population. Um, and um, so you have, there are several vaccines in development around the world. Um, you have, uh, of course, I'm familiar with the vaccines in development in the United States. Uh, there's at least one a promising vaccine coming out of uh, the UK. Uh, Russia claims to have a vaccine in I mean, I'll confess, I guess, to my cold board bias, I, I'm not sure I would trust that vaccine. Uh, China has several vaccines, um, and I'm not sure I trust that vaccine either, uh, because uh, we frequently buy food from China that ends up being corrupted in some way by poisonous substances. One of the things I was just reading about recently was salt from China often has heavy metals contaminating it. So you would think salt, you know, how bad can that be? But it could have a lot of things like uh, like mercury or or uh, other heavy metals contaminating the salt, and of course things like mercury uh, are very bad, especially for young children. So you know, I, I don't completely trust what comes out of China either. And I, I will admit right up front that this is my American bias coming through. Um, but actually, several years ago, I was looking at uh, spending a year in Shanghai at China's Jiaotong University, 
much as I spent or tried to spend a year at UCA, I uh, uh, I was looking at potentially spending a year in Shanghai, and I visited Shanghai for a week, and uh, I just decided, you know, that uh, the uh, the air quality was just too bad, uh, and as I said, I have asthma. With my asthma, it could be a real health concern for me. So I ended up not spending a year in China. And uh, the one thing we can say about Nairin is that the air quality is very good. And I think that's true of Korg also. Bishkek is a different story. Um, so, okay, i given you that little summary of thing of how you might look at doing the uh, the assignment on the using the covid data and like i said i want that i want you to turn that in uh, before we hit the the mid semester break which is i guess set up as an exam break and uh, so do this before then you get you get something done before then then you don't have to worry about trying to do it as you're studying for exams. Now, also let me say with the homework. So I, I haven't returned you grades on the homeworks, but everybody who has turned in the homework is doing exceedingly well. And uh, so you shouldn't be worried about that. And um, uh, if you really want to know uh, what your grade is, send me an email and I'll tell you how your grades are, but everybody is doing very well. And because you're doing the homeworks and turning them in and I'm grading them, right now I'm not thinking about having a separate midterm of giving you that time to work on your other classes. You're turning in these homeworks every week. I'm grading them and uh, you're looking good and so I'm happy with that. So I'm uh, I'm finished speaking. I guess I've been talking for my hour at uh, time flies. Anybody have any questions here? Go ahead, hit me with a question. Okay. No questions. No questions. Okay. Guess I. Okay then. Um, I'll see you guys all in a couple days. Uh, is there a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, in the chat, Sumaino wrote, "Will we have midterm exams?" Oh, I um, I just talked about that. You must have been. Uh, you must have been uh, uh, collecting a cup of coffee or something. Um, I said, uh, I'll repeat briefly. I said, uh, you know, everybody is turning in homework and not everybody has turned in homework. That's a problem. But everybody who's turned in homework is doing extremely well. And if you have a specific question about how you're doing, you know, send me an email or question me on, uh, on Teams or something and I'll be glad to let you know, but everybody's doing well and everybody is doing so well that I really don't see a need for having a midterm. I, I'm perfectly happy with the homework. So uh, any more any more questions about that? No, thank you. So you have homeworks, you have this little COVID assignment Think of this as the midterm, the COVID assignment. Uh, and, can I ask regarding the COVID assignment? Yeah, well, go ahead. What do you want to know? Uh, so this project should be presented as an Excel uh, part or we should present it on Teams? Um, okay, what I'm looking for you to do is to use Excel to analyze the data and then uh, after you analyze the data and, and you come to some conclusions, I would like you to write a few paragraphs to say, here's the data, 
here's what we have determined in our analysis of the data. And these are my conclusions based on the data. So I'm not I'm not looking, you know, for a huge paper. I'm looking to see that you've done some analysis in Excel and then you might write a page or two summarizing what you have concluded from the Excel analysis of the data. Does that uh, make sense? Yes, yes, I got you. Okay. And but I'm not being too specific. I'm saying that's what I would expect to see. But if you have a, a different way of doing it, I'm open to that. You know, if you have so a different approach that you want to take, and I'm and I may ask uh, people, uh, you know, after everybody's turned them in, and after the midterm, I may ask you, you know, as we just when we're about to begin the processing part of the course, I may ask a few people to present their data um, if they've done, you know, what I consider to be uh, a really surprising uh, job on doing their data analysis. But I'm, I'm not telling you that you're going to have to do that. I mean, you, I'm not, you don't have to, but if someone does real, something really interesting, I may ask them to present it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I know I, I don't think I have COVID, not yet. And um, so you get this turned in before the midterm. That way I can look at it look at your results, your 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 analysis over the midterm. And then when the midterm's done, if there's someone who's done something really interesting, I may ask them to do the presentation to the entire class. But you know, don't uh, you know that may not happen. So um okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay then uh, one last, are there any more questions? Okay, then. I'm going to stop recording and turn everything off. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for the lecture. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.